my dad stayed in my tent the other night because his tent got destroyed, which, which was brilliant because it was my tent, my home, my domain, so I was in charge for once, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> Another expense because of the weather. It's not bad for £32.40. <laughs> the greatest hits of all time. On your way home. The BBC are making a new documentary series. If you're working and find it a little bit difficult to stay afloat, they want to hear from you. On the rails, delays and cancellations. New documentary series on the real story behind Working Britain. If you're in work and fighting to stay afloat, the BBC... Last year, local radio stations up and down the country played adverts asking people to phone in if they were struggling to make ends meet, despite having a job. I normally keep a 15p or so. All right, buddy. No problem. Good luck. Calls came in from all over the UK. Working absolutely stupid hours. Frequently, skin on payday, month after month. Absolutely buried in debt. I want to lose a house. I can't afford to keep living like this. Many ask not to be identified. Please well, don't tell them who I am. But some wanted to share their stories. We've got nothing in the bank. We haven't even got a pension. We're doomed. We followed nine families for a year as their financial futures hung in the balance. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. Hell no. Being broke is not the same as being broken. So what does Just About Managing really mean for millions of us from all walks of life and all over Britain? I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. Do you know when you're working with Wolf next? I'll oh, definitely be working at some point this no, week. No, when? Has he week? told you a date? So you don't know then? So yeah. at the moment, all you've got is what you've got yeah. for the next, could be week, two weeks or whatever. It won't be two weeks, it'll be next, probably four days. Every time you've got money, you have to spend it, but we can't afford it. Just look at the basics. Well, we can at the moment, because I've got the money. Oh, because right. you're rich all of a sudden, yeah. No. For one day. Stop mixing all that. I'm not looking at the bigger picture, mate. There we go, flex the pecs. He's just quite happy to do one day a week and let Daddy carry his load. That's why I stress him and we fall out all the time, because he's not pulling his weight and I get fed up with it. When he's having a good day, my dad has a, generally has a good day and he's a, a fun to be around, but most of the time when he's having a bad day or he's stressing, it's not so fun to be around, but you just have to... But because I'm so used to it now, I just... I like Dad. I like Dad. <laughs> From the minute you opened your eyes this morning, you was in a grump. Yes, you was. Even though Billy and his dad work when they can, they've been homeless since Steve lost his full-time job five months ago. It upsets me from where he used to be to what he is now. And he hasn't really done anything to deserve what's happened, if you know what I mean. He got shit on, which isn't nice. I could stay here for hours. I love this sort of stuff. It's a dream shop. You dream about having it all, but you can't have it all. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully, we, we get a, um, a flat soon. They've been living in a couple of flimsy tents and recently moved into the woods at the back of a friend's house. But winter's coming, and they need at least £1,500 to pay the deposit and rent on a flat. It's my tent over here. Billy's tent's there on the left. It's where we keep our little supplies and our plates and that. Can't keep milk out it goes off too quick, so you're wasting money. And that UHT milk is disgusting. There's no way I'd drink that. I'd rather have no milk. But when you've had five months of it, it's not camping anymore, it's surviving. It's surviving. This is a lovely fishing bed. This is my bit of luxury. Don't ask me why, but... Um, I've got an old Xbox 360, probably just in the hope that I'll get a telly. It's nice waking up, listening to the birds in the morning, which is, which is all right, but yeah, it's, it does get a bit annoying sometimes. But what can you do? <laughs> Never imagined I'd be living in a tent. No, no. 
But it's better than being outside. I'm 50 years old. But 50 years old and living in a tent. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I'd rather be in a house, wouldn't I, without a doubt, you know? <laughs> After he lost his job, Steve took whatever work he could find, like the occasional shift in the pub down the road. Now he's signed up to a zero hours contract with an agency. And for the last two weeks, he's been putting in 10 hours a day on a hot farm. Like nearly a million other people on a zero hours, he doesn't know how much work he'll get each day or whether there'll be anything at all next week. I really don't enjoy this job whatsoever. I absolutely hate it. That's the truth. I hate it. I hate the job. But it's a job. If you don't take this job, someone else will do. There might be a chance you miss it. So you've got to take any job you can get, anything. Doesn't matter what it is, shit shoveling, building anything. You just got to take the job. Billy works part time for a tree surgeon, but can't afford a place of his own, and has always lived with his dad. The pay's not bad, but the work's so sporadic. I've to survive on about five hundred pound a month. We haven't always lived in the back of someone's garden. Me and my dad lived on the beach for five months, which was, yeah, interesting. <laughs> During the summer months, it was lovely. It was like being on a holiday. And then the rain come in, the wind come in, our tents got flooded. Yeah, we sort of had to uh, get out and look for somewhere else. The council offered Steve emergency accommodation 50 miles away in a hostel, but he turned it down. Because he's lived in Hastings all his life, He'd rather stay close to his friends and family. Hopefully now, almonds and upwards, you know what I mean? So we've upgraded from the beach to a garden. Next thing, it's a house or flat. Happy days. But yeah. <laughs> this Tuesday, there's a £121 million jackpot. Britain is one of the richest countries in the world. Yet millions of people still struggle to pay the bills. Hello, I'm uh, just responding to the radio advert. I'm a 48-year-old uh, truck driver. Uh, my partner works full-time for the NHS. Um, I work up to 60 to 65 hours a week, and we are only just making uh, ends meet. 85, 90% of my earnings every week. Going to try and uh, clear our overdraft off. I'm getting paid on Friday and I currently have £17 in my bank account. Uh, so, you know, we're only about sort of two paychecks away from being homeless. So that's basically it. It's just the cost of living going up, but the wages are either going down or just remaining static. Dex, calm down. Jesus. That's why your mother always walks a bloody thing. I don't think you can describe Patalba without actually seeing steelworks. It's like the blood, isn't it? That's the blast on it. The blast furnace, they call it. One of them has exploded. Exploded? Yep. Years ago now. I was in there to see molten steel flying in the air. You could. You want something better for your children. You don't want them to follow in your footsteps. I didn't really go chasing dreams or anything. I didn't. I just done whatever I needed to do just to earn money. My cousins work here. My father, my uncles, my auntie. Just look at it. Beautiful, isn't it? Steelworks with the mountains in the background. It's the last big industry of Britain. Not anything left now, is there? Ross works four days on and four days off at one of Britain's two remaining steelworks. 
He works 12 hours a day and earns £375 a week after tax. So this is my control room, or my bubble as I like to call it. This is my home from home. This is the brains of the plant. If a plant stops, this screen will show me then which area is actually broken. And then I will head out there and fix it. I spent about 20 years in this bloody bubble. God, I'm old. But um, I will have actually done something. Not just worked in the steroids. I like it and I enjoy my job and that. Like, it's not something that I want to do. It's not... I need to go to school and think, yeah, I know what I want to do. I want to go shovel shit for a little bit. Ross's pay has not kept up with inflation and the cost of living. So effectively, he's bringing home less than when he started 20 years ago. But now he's got three kids, a mortgage, and £8,000 of credit card debt. Film night on a Friday night. This is my uh, chill out night. Listen now, these socks have been on the floor since yesterday. Didn't I say somebody better tidy up in here? And you have all sat and Wait, done absolutely when, when, nothing. When Why am I going to pick up your debris every two minutes? Because you were 16 this year and you've just turned 14. <laughs> Is this fair? Ravnala. Tidying shit up. They fell into debt because Vicky stayed home to look after the kids. And for nearly 14 years, Ross was the only breadwinner. But now, Vicky is back in full-time work. Can you go shout to them for you? I paid them last time. Don't. Don't do it, because someone will die tonight. I'm telling you now. What is the song you've been singing today? Shoot up. Mammy's in a good mood, isn't she? <laughs> She's always full of joy when she finishes work. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Though Ross and Vicky both have full-time jobs, once the bills, debts and mortgage have been paid, there's usually less than £300 a month left to live off. Dad, I found it. Take swaps. I used to be heaving, yeah. We used to have loads and loads. But now it's died down, look. It's a sign of time zone, eh? Sad. It is sad. Yeah. Don't say that, sad job. All right, thanks, Ta -ra. Ta -ra. See you next week. Next week. Ta -ra. The grim forecast in the budget suggests workers are facing two lost decades without any rise in average earnings. The most prolonged pressure on family incomes for more than 60 years. We're going to see incomes cut by about £800 on average for the poorest third of households. The government said we want to build an economy that works for everyone. No. Thanks. You couldn't have filled my glass any more, could you? Well, I'm not going to make it two trips. I've done the lottery tonight. £155 million. <gasps> what would I do with it if we won? We could build a kibbutz. We could build a little village and we could have all our people all together. Move your father and your brothers down. I'd rather stay home. Flew to you. See, we wouldn't leave here. at all, but we'd be babe. No, but I think we'd have a nice home somewhere else as well. That would be nice. Yeah, well, we wouldn't have to go to work. We wouldn't have to go to work. Ross was born eight doors down on the same street he lives on now. After he left school, he did a bit of scaffolding and was briefly a jet ski instructor. 
when I was growing up, we didn't have much. Me and my brothers used to watch her wrestling on TV. And we always said that when we grow up, we are going to be wrestlers. We are going to be top superstars. Yeah. For the last year or so, Ross has been taking his two eldest children training every Sunday at the Royal Imperial Wrestling Club. Fine name. <laughs> Bye. Amy and Kellen can't enter a pro fight until the 16, but Ross is ready to step into the ring. You know the big show? We're going to debut. It's going to be a tag match. It's going to be me and you. You're going to get the squad. They're both big guys in yeah. the squad, isn't it? Yeah, but even though you're like a smaller man, you're still extremely strong. And that's what I want to get out to the crowd. Like, even though Kurt is the big guy, you, you can give as good as you take, sort of thing. Do what is he, 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, he's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he's a beast. Oh, he man. is a beast. It's my first proper wrestling match. And all my family are going to be there. So it's a big deal. I don't want to cock it up. Well, I gotta be the um, I gotta be the man, and I I gotta be the the hero. I am got the best of um, education, I suppose, but I can't just walk them into a job and there you are, there's your job. So all I can do is just teach them how to fight. There's always been people who have struggled to make ends meet, but these days. Even some of those who thought they had made it are living on the edge. Well, I have what's fondly known as a portfolio career. Um, so I came up to London to be in a band, and then uh, I did photography, and then I raised one and a half million pounds to launch an internet logistics business based in the courier industry. That lasts about four years. And it came really, really close once or twice to really suddenly taking off. Uh, in which case life would have been a bit a different story. You know, I've fallen off the, the high trapeze, baby. There's no mistaking that. But at least I, I've landed in a Mercedes. Um, so that's, it's not the end of the world, is it? Good morning. Mark has no savings or pension. He's been driving for Uber for nearly three years. They take 25% of his earnings, so he needs to make at least £800 a week to cover his costs, pay his rent, and put food on the table for his family. As soon as I got into it, I was doing it double shifts, seven days a week, uh, because we were in such... We were in such doo-doo financially, literally. I mean, I was on the edge of losing the flat. Um, I rent my place, I don't own it. Um, you know, all the bills were backed up. Uh, it was just, I was waking up at 4.30 in a sweat. So Uber was a massive relief for me. If you're prepared to throw your life at it, you can make the money you need to make. I'm just another player in the gig economy. And uh, it's hand to mouth on a month to month basis. Hello. Okay, we're going Heathrow T2. I drove these two great big Aussie blokes. They were both pretty pissed. And the young one, he was huge. And he interrupted my conversation by saying, yeah, Mark, that's all very well, but what I really want to do is get in the front and suck your cock. <laughs> to which I went, oh, really? Ah, oh, right, because that's not in the training video, Uber Towers, that one. I was like, first of all, I said, uh, very flattered. Uh, very flattered, thank you very much. It's not really my thing, you know. I said, I've got a wife and kids. So have I, mate. <laughs> so I've made 65 quid today. And that just is not enough. So I'll probably have to work Friday night as well and maybe Saturday to try and make that up. Bye bye. For over 20 years, Mark has lived in a housing association flat with his partner, Mimi. It's not often the whole family get together now the eldest three have full-time jobs. I'm going to plate Mark up. 
Only Gabe is still living at home while he studies to be a pilot. But Mark is worried that even if Gabe passes selection, he can't manage to finance the training fees. Mm hmm. Mark, you beer or wine? I want wine. That one's open. Can we go? Yes, go, yeah, go, 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 go. I love having them all here. It's a rare occurrence these days. They're all rounded up. They enjoy each other's company. When they all arrived, they were all in the boys' room just gaming and chatting, and I eavesdropped a little bit. And they just get on so well, and I'm, you know, proud of them. Lovely, having more hair. You're not gonna see them off? Go on. There have been a lot of hard times over the years. I've always done little bits and bobs, not really had a career as such, and he's had these stops and starts with income. And we've never had savings, we've never had big holidays, but we eat well and we, we muddle along in quite an old fashioned way. No, it, it, it happens twice, Dad. Mark will soon have to decide whether to pay £600 to stay with Uber for another three years. But even if he does carry on driving, he could still lose everything. If you imagine how hard it is to keep your licence when you're driving 60 hours a week, everywhere is cameras and flashes. If you get four flashes in three years, that's 12 points. 12 points are off the road. And when you get a flash when you're driving, it's not because you're, you know, being dick dastardly and you think, ha ha, I'm going to get away with it. It's because you make a slip. You know, if things go wrong for me, it puts me one step closer to being out of a job. Um, not having a job probably means not having a home. The only way we cope with the future is by not thinking about it. If I thought about it, I'd just give up. All I've had today is five packets of salt and vinegar crisps at work. You know, I didn't have money for sandwiches or anything, so... A pound for six bags of salt and vinegar crisps got me through the day. You just have to get by, don't you? As long as you eat, that's all that matters. Get some food inside you and crack on with it. <laughs> We've got the Heinz spaghetti. That's one meal. Beans on toast. That's another meal. If you've got five pounds, you get as much as you can for a fiver. You know, they're quite extravagant because they're Heinz. <laughs> Steve used to work as a caretaker at the local football club. He only earned £9,000 a year, but was able to get by because his boss gave him a discount on the rent for a caravan. This. So when a couple of businessmen from out of town bought the club, Steve didn't just lose his job, he also lost his home. That's my one, right down the back under the trees there. That's where I lived. Uh, right, yeah, look, through the gap, that one there. That's where me and Billy lived, in there. I loved it down there. I absolutely loved it down there. Nice, isn't it? Uh, uh, that's done and dusted. That's the past now, isn't it? Forwards now. Fuck it. I didn't have to worry about nothing. I had a roof over my head. And then bosh. And I didn't even see it coming. This is where my tent used to be. Right here. This is where I slept. And Billy's tent was over there. Yeah, I do miss this place, actually. I'm 51 years old. Uh, absolutely buried in debt. Uh, I want to lose a house. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm just doomed. I'm constantly in debt, you know, taking out payday loans and using credit cards for simple things like food and even contemplating suicide on some occasions just because being alive is just far too expensive. Billy and Steve will freeze if they don't find somewhere to live before winter. 
But because they've been homeless for so long, they reckon they have a pretty good chance of getting social housing on the council's online bidding system. How do you log in, Bill? Log in? No, 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 no change this here. Problem is, there's only three houses available and over a hundred people applying for them. If you are in band C or D, the severe shortage of council and housing association homes in your area may mean you have to wait years before being housed. Renting privately may be the solution for you. We're in better than C or D, we're in B, but you know, it's not saying that we're homeless, it's just saying that we need two separate bedrooms. They don't realise we've got no bloody bedrooms. We haven't even got a house, we haven't even got a place to stay. So really, we're in the wrong category. We need to get the band changed. Yeah, I think we're in the wrong band. Just contact us. That's a piss take, isn't it? Oh, sorry, but that's a piss take. If you want help bidding, right, we're, we're low on money. So if you want help, yeah, we'll give you help at 25p a minute plus your company's network charge. So it could be 50p a minute to phone and you sit there 40 minutes waiting for it to get through and listening to a bloody taped machine. So you're looking at like, you know, 20 or quid just for them to say, no, sorry, we can't help you. Don't know nothing about it. So what are you doing now then? Reading about bidding. Yeah, you can't look it up, Bill. There's no help anywhere. Oh, mate. Waste of time, this is. Just a waste of money, waste of time, this. The charity shelter says the number of people rough sleeping, staying in hostels or temporary accommodation is more than a quarter of a million. It's blamed the crisis on years of underinvestment in the building of affordable properties. The, the distance is so far to get that deposit that maybe back in the 80s you might have had to scrimp and save, but did you have to do it for so long? I get... nearly bought a house back in the... Ooh, 83, something like that. And it was a two-bedroom place, but it was £23,000. Uh, and I had a job um, earning about nine grand a year. So I guess that it was only, what, three times my wages. James, would house prices going down be a good thing or a bad thing? I think, uh, I think it's got to be a good thing related to the supply. Yeah, but the whole, that's the whole, the whole economy hangs on, you know, because everybody's borrowing is backed up by the price of their house. And it's an impossible position where we need housing to be affordable, but, but that's the value of everybody's life that they've piled into the house. So if it falls, we're all screwed. So we're screwed either way. But they're ridiculously high, aren't they, in some parts of the country? It's ludicrous. Basically, they've turned our homes into a commodity, and homes shouldn't be a commodity. They're not something that you, you know, you gamble your money on in the hope of making some more. And uh, how that is not the biggest scandal in the political world is beyond me, really beyond me. What kind of successful government runs a country where ordinary people can't afford a home? That's not success, is it? I to get um Bright blonde hair, do I am? Um... Yeah. Yes. I look like four, won't I? No. Yes, I will. No, you won't. I look just like four. No, you won't. I will be the god of thunder. <laughs> She's so supportive of me, isn't she? <laughs> I am the god of thunder. God of war, I am. That's going to be my uh, Viking armour, isn't it? Well, that looks awesome. You tell me you don't think that look good. What is it? That that's to your waist. It goes down like that. Oh, two like neck that. dress. That's a fucking dress. Sleeveless dress. Sh vest, not dress. <laughs> he's a kid. I think all men are kids, aren't they? I don't think he's ready to be a grown up yet. Bit of a Peter Pan thing going on there, I think. Do you know what, though? He enjoys his little self, so who am I to, to criticise? Nothing wrong with dreaming, sir. 
particularly for Ross, I mean, his days are so mundane going to work. If he thought that that was all that there was until he retires, what motivation is there to get up and keep going? My dream is to have a clear laundry basket. I don't ask for much, and that's absolutely attainable, isn't it? It's not a lot to ask for, is it, Dex? I think you peed on my foot. My foot is very soggy, Dex. Lock it in. Slowly bring him down. Ah. Though wrestling is carefully choreographed, it still hurts to get it wrong. And Ross has to practice all the moves before his debut in seven weeks. Come to me. Production at the steelworks has fallen behind and Ross has been told to do extra shifts, which means he won't have time to train for his big fight. All right. Oh, really? Mara. I think I got to spot to laryngitis. Funny that she was very loud with the rugby yesterday. She was very loud. I can shout, all right? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to have a life now for the next few months. We used to work four on, four off. But no, it's two days, two nights, two off. Two days, two nights, two off. So the body clock's going to be messed up. You won't have much rest in between your shifts. All my routines and everything is going to be just not good. That's not going to be good. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to fit it all in. But it helped the overdraft. I was getting out of debt a bit, wasn't it? Hopefully. Hopefully. It's think of the money, isn't it? Yeah. You can't exactly say no. I would like to have my own big match. But obviously, uh, work's got to come first. You have to put wrestling on a back burner while you uh, while you earn the money. Work comes first. This is the only country in which wages have not recovered since the global financial crash. We've been dealing with Labour's mismanagement of the economy. Yeah. Billy and Steve's local is closing tonight and it's all you can drink for £20. The new owners want to convert the pub into holiday homes that they hope to sell for hundreds of thousands of pounds. We'll miss this place when it closes because this was our... this was our... Safe haven is such to say. You know what I mean? It was our, it was our safe haven, and the landlord and the landlady have been absolutely amazing to us. They've gave us somewhere to go, somewhere to where we can eat when we've got no money. So uh, tonight, um, it's the last day, so it's our farewells because I'm sure there's people that we won't see again from here. <laughs> Wait, Dan. Dan, please, please, mate, please, please, get in touch with man. Listen, man, I love you so much. I mm, know, oh, mate, I oh, know. You've looked after me a bit, mate. You give me shifts behind the bar. I love you for that. Your family. You know, no, seriously, Dan, serious. The thing is, our own government shit. has treated our own people like ships. Mm. It's gone to the dogs. It ain't, it ain't in, this is not England no more. Every person you're voting for to get into politics Don't is the same shit, dirty bastard than the person that you just voted out. A scum. Be real. I've got your back, you've got mine. Oh, I love you, babes. Ching, ching. <laughs> Oh, 
basically. I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, what you've done. What have you Dad. done? Dad. Yes. You awake? No, Bill, I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm making you sandwiches for work tomorrow. He <laughs> don't know what he's doing. No, I don't. <laughs> the simplest task of making a sandwich right now is difficult. <laughs> Seriously, Bill. What? Dad? Dad, how much pickle do you like? A lot? So not a lot? Yeah, take that. <laughs> That's a disaster, look at that. Food is food. Oh. You need food. I've just made you food. Don't moan about it. <laughs> it's for work tomorrow, stop being funny. I started to say my alarm hasn't gone off, I haven't got up, Billy really hasn't got up. Bill, get your ass in gear, mate, don't you miss a day. Do you hear me? Don't you miss a day, mate. Right, Dad, I'll see you later. Steve's car is still at the pub, and by the time he can get to work, he'll have missed half a day. Bollocks. When he called his employment agency to apologise, he not only lost his job at the farm, he was told he wouldn't be getting any more work because he was too unreliable. It's around 85, 84. That'll have to last me until I get a job. With another agency. Can't get onto Uber. So what? look, roundy, roundy, fucking roundy. Mark turns 60 next year, and he'd hope that by now he'd be looking forward to a comfortable retirement. But this morning, he's had the results from his annual health check and three years of driving around London has taken its toll. I'm officially diabetic. Well, no, you're not. You're borderline. No, I'm 6.6. 6. 6.5 6. is diabetic. The thing to do is to crank up the exercise. It's all just because of a bit having a sedentary job. Can't I just have lipo? Lipo vouchers for Christmas. <laughs> and here I'm going to take this yes. home for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you get the job off out the door, um, I reckon it doesn't take me more than about 20 seconds to get in the car and get rolling. And you might... Oh, bollocks! They cancelled. Oh. As well as running the house and raising her boys, Mimi earns a bit of extra cash as a Pilates instructor. Exhale, engage the belly, use the tummy. To and though it's not a steady income, it does help pay the bills. They manage fine so long as Mark can keep working. But they don't own the house and they've never saved for a pension. I don't have a retirement plan because I've always been freelance. I, I've never paid my salary. I've got no, no pension at all. So I think that, as far as I know, the state gives you some kind of basic, super basic pension. They must do, otherwise the, the suits would be full of starving geriatrics, I suppose. Half of the adult population are said to be financially vulnerable in some way. 15 million failing to save for a pension. Yeah. 
six and a half million with no savings to speak of. That's many millions living on the edge. The walking is endless, the talking is That's me and Mark uh, in Munich, and we used to shoot um, for a German pop magazine, Bravo. He looks so young. And so <laughs> he was in the studio a lot, and I was raising kids, so... <laughs> but, yeah, we were good. We had fun. At least I set out to be a professional photographer, and I did become one, so that's something. So that's Jay-Z, and he's really young when he first came to the UK. That is All Saints. Do you remember All Saints? Mark Morrison. Return of the Mac. I remember it being really difficult because we had three really young children. I mean, Oliver was a newborn. And, you know, any parent will tell you how hard that is. Hmm. Oh, that was hectic. But, you know, I, we coped. Having devoted myself to raising the boys rather than trying to have a career as well you know it's like if you choose to do that then don't feel guilty you know you it's a it's quite a job and i think my boys benefited from it you know they, they they're they're well adjusted and i know it's not always possible you've got to earn money you've got to keep up your mortgage payments you've got to continue a career if it's on a good trajectory you know but it, it was just different for me and i'm glad i did it the way i did it but we've ridden many a storm, and there are probably still more to come. Mark does feel the pressure. So that is all the car payments for one year. It's tricky. I'm into the overdraft now, so you know I'm hoping this year things will take off a bit more financially. And I keep thinking, is this it? You know, is this where it ends? Finished his career as a taxi driver. I'm scared of getting ill because we can't afford to take any time off. But I still haven't given up the idea of doing something else. This government's priorities are those in Britain who are working hard, but just about managing. People for whom life sometimes can be a struggle, but who get on with things without complaint. They get on with their jobs, sometimes two or even three of them. They don't ask for much, but they want to know that everyone plays by the same rules and things are fair. And above all, they want to believe that tomorrow will be better than today and their children will have the chance to go as far as their talents will take them. Here's a bad one, Mars. I had a couple of shoots block on me, and uh, it was just one of them nights it was. So I spent my Friday night shoveling shit. <sighs> Ross has been doing extra shifts for the last month, so he's missed all his training sessions at the gym. God. It messes up my training, messes up the wrestling side of it. But it'll help the bank account. It'll help the bills and the debts. It's got to be done, innit? Hi. I've been in full-time employment ever since I was 15 years old. 
to be perfectly honest with you, I don't have a penny of savings. And I'm trying to teach your kids that, yes, it's worth working. It, it, it really isn't unless you were in a really, really well-paid job. The government, they want us to just survive. We're surviving. Nobody's living in this UK anymore. I can't afford to live. It's disgusting. She's not after struggles, are you? No. There's just a massive gap in there between living expenses and what you can actually earn. Yet you've got asylum seekers and everybody else coming over the country. You're having £500 a week in benefits, vouchers to go shopping to Tesco's. What's that about? It's like smoke and mirrors, though, isn't it? They can just kind of put it on to the asylum seekers. So everybody gets angry with them. Then, yeah, that's what, they, you can deflect, can you? It's not, it's not their... It's, it's, it's not their It's the fault. government that's, that's, that's screwing it. Yeah. Like it's, the, it's the bloody... It's the rich sat on their ass, sleeping in the bloody you know, room, making all our decisions. We haven't got a fucking clue how to live in the real world. They don't give a shit, do they? Yeah. And nobody should have to be doing two and three jobs just to feed the kids. No. Try again. Though he hasn't been able to get to the wrestling club, Ross isn't about to give up on his dream. A fucking bootful. Let, let's cover what you need. A few days before his debut, his tag partner, PJ, has offered to go through the routine. Be in there. Two, one, two, three. Stuck. Uh, bang! Bang! This is when you block. Like me out. Farming. Yeah. When you're stuck in work, you're constantly having to think of work and having to think of money. You should wrestling. You don't have to think of anything else. It's just what's in front of you. It's like freedom. One of the power moves Ross has to rehearse is to lift his opponent above his head and then slam him to the ground. Right, one thing, try and pick him up like you would for a slam. Don't slam him, but just get him up. Him? Yeah. What I'm thinking is I want to see if he looks natural. Right, try and transition your hand from there then to there. Yeah, you got a bang on, actually. That um, looks nice and smooth. So. I mean. She's running through my mind um, this match. Wherever I'm going to be fit enough, wherever I'm going to be uh, strong enough. They've all got high hopes for me being able to lift everybody up all the bloody time. And I, I've got to try and make myself... pick myself up. I've got to look the part. Every wrestler needs an alter ego. And Ross is going to be the Dread Wolf. Not too bad. I'm trying to find a hair for four. I can't say that. I can't pronounce my THs. Yeah, that. That colour. Yeah, I know what you want. That hair. We'll get bleach then. Uh... Don't look too bad, actually. It looks like crap. <laughs> what the hell, Kevin? What the hell? <laughs> oh, fucking hell! <laughs> That's annoying. <amazing. laughs> Love, I look grey anymore. I look like 20 years younger. <laughs> He's a little bit nervous. And I think people give him a bit of ribbon for doing it. But secretly, I think perhaps they're a bit jealous because they haven't got, I don't want to say courage, but they won't get up and do it themselves. It's easier to take the mick out of someone than tap them on the back and say, oh, well done, mate. Good effort. Life's too short to be serious all the time. With no job and no pub to go to, boredom's kicked in and Steve wants to move camp. I've just got to make sure there's no spoilers. 
fucking hell. Now he's got a bath, he's running everywhere. Look. Oh, ooh. I'm so that It's just miserable down here. You don't see nothing, you don't see no one, you don't socialise, you don't even see the stars. How you doing, Bill? Oh, yeah. Feels like I've only been here two minutes and we're moving already. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> It feels really weird being back here. Really weird. I've got a gigantic swimming pool, which is which is a touch. <laughs> That's the result. But don't get me wrong, I prefer a bed and a room and a TV and an Xbox. I haven't um got saying anything at all, really. But um he's my dad, so sort of part with it and obviously I'm gonna be here with him on the beach because I wanna make sure he's alright, so I wouldn't have it any other way really. So, yeah, there's definitely more cold down here. <laughs> this is much better, much, much better already. I'm happy here. I'll, I'll be, I'm happy here. million percent yeah. happy here. I don't care what anyone says. If you wanted to go back, you could go and put yourself up there. No, I'm, I'm, wide, I'm, I'm, like I'm happy here. I'm, I've got things to do. Mm. Oh, Teal's popped his head up again. I mean, there's his partner. Look, she's come up beside. If only it weren't for the wind, we wouldn't have left here. Yeah, there you go, that's life. There are millions of people like Mark who survive from paycheck to paycheck. And though driving 60 hours a week is ruining his health, he now has to decide if he's going to renew his licence and carry on for another three years. Is it nice then? Is it's it very nice. nice. It's almost like a real lamb went in there. No, it's totally vegan. I've got to go now. Um, All right. Are you going to cycle or get the train over there? I'll get the train. All right, see you. Bye bye. Mm, bye. Love you. He's gone out the door, but you know he'll be back one day in the not too distance. He's going to go out that door with a big bag and he ain't coming back. Yeah, that'll be it. All done. Ciao. All gone. All four. Oh, no. And then it'd be me and thee. Oh, God. <laughs> and the cats. <laughs> yes. It's going to be weird. It's going to be different. Mm. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, I imagine then that I will breed, breed pedigree cats. So that's your big money making idea? Yeah. Cat breeder? <laughs> yeah. And will this support us? Will we be able to live on the pedigree cats? The fact is, are the lights going to be switched on? Will we be able to afford to heat the place and eat anything? You know, we've got nothing in the bank. We don't own any property. We haven't even got a pension. It's a pretty... We're doomed. It is a bleak prospect, isn't it? Yeah. Unless something turns up. Yeah. It's not fair on you to, to keep driving an Uber. You know, it's soul-destroying. Babe, we haven't got an alternative unless you can find a job. That pays a decent whack. What would I do? I'm not qualified to do anything. What job could I get? I, I you know, where the plan would be to try and get more Pilates. It's, 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 I just, I've still got this feeling like we just cross the bridge when we come to it, you know. Just be poor, cope, like we always have. There just isn't a bridge, so that's the trouble mm -hmm. anymore. There's no bridge. Oh, stop it. It's just very depressing. Realistically, thinking about the future, I am going to have to keep working. And, and you know, that I guess that that's what I'm going to do. You know, my role will change. I won't, I won't be this sort of house mother <coughs> that I've been for the last 28 years. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's a big change. And, yeah, yeah, it's fast approaching. And I haven't really thought enough about it. I don't know. I suppose it's time to do that. <laughs> make some make some plans. So, yeah, maybe... When I took out my first licence, it was for three years, I thought, well, I won't be doing this in three years. Here I am renewing it. You know, if I get to the end of this one, it'll be six years. Um, and... 
you know, I'm getting towards the end of my working life. I'm 59, for Christ's sake. It, it's mad. So I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. So I'm just going to keep buggering on and uh, until I get somewhere. Or they dig a hole in the ground and put me in it, you know. What else can you do? Hopefully, we'll live fast, die young, and leave beautiful corpses. I mean, that's the best plan there is, isn't it? The guy I'm fighting, apparently, he's never been lifted before. It's a bloody giant. And because of work, I haven't had as much training as I hoped. But with the kids, I've got to show them that you can uh, just go for it. Toughening them up, you get hit down and you fight to come back. Just to show that nothing can keep you down. Applying for is delivery driver. Driving jobs, I love driving. Yes, yes, yes. Just give me a chance. Just give me a trial. I'll prove I can do the job. You know what I mean? Just give me that chance. Give me that opportunity, and I'll, I'll prove you. They love me. Just have to graft and get on with it. No one's going to put me down. No one's going to belittle me. I'm a human being after all. I've made 65 quid today, and that just is not enough. So um, I'll probably have to work Friday night as well, and maybe Saturday to try and make that up. I'm just another player in the gig economy, and uh, it's hand to mouth on a month to month basis. The BBC are making a new documentary series. If you're working and finds it a little bit difficult to stay afloat, they want to hear from you. New documentary series on the real story behind working Britain. Call us if you're at work and fighting to stay afloat. Last year, local radio stations up and down the country played adverts, asking people to phone in if they were struggling to make ends meet, despite having a job. We've got nothing in the bank. We haven't even got a pension. We're doomed. Calls came in from all over the UK. Working absolutely stupid hours. Frequently, skin tone payday, month after month. Salaries or two paychecks away from disaster or being homeless. I can't afford to keep living like this. Many asked not to be identified. Please don't tell them who I am. 
but some wanted to share their stories. There's just a massive gap in there between living expenses and what you can actually earn. No. And nobody should have to be doing two and three jobs just to feed the kids. We followed nine families for a year as their financial futures hung in the balance. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. Hell no! Being broke is not the same as being broken. So what does Just About Managing really mean for millions of us from all walks of life and all over Britain? I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. Big one coming up. <laughs> Bill, you're gonna get flooded. <laughs> you're actually quite on the edge here. I'm living the high life, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, oh, see that come close. Bloody hell. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, most people be sitting indoors chilling out right now. <laughs> Six months ago, Steve and his 22 year old son, Billy, were both working full time and shared a home. Now Steve's lost his permanent job and the accommodation that came with it, and they've ended up living in tents on the beach. Dad, <laughs> do you think I might have to move soon? That's as far as it's gonna get, the tide's going out. That's it, mate, it ain't gonna get up any higher than that. The, wave, the waves get bigger, it will, but at the moment, it's right. Steve's on a list for a council house in Hastings, but demand is high and available housing is low. What they put down, the women band, band B, in need of extra space, is what they put down for us. I think we've got enough space <laughs> out here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so what you have to do to be in Category A, I don't know. Winter's coming, and life for Billy and Steve is about to get even tougher. Storm Brian has arrived just in time for the weekend. We have some very strong winds to contend with. A storm is due to batter the south coast, and finding a safe place to shelter will need money. Yeah, um, uh, but the uh, corner fire needs to get hedge trimmer for that. Billy can earn up to £200 a week assisting a mate who's a tree surgeon, but his hours aren't guaranteed. Yeah, well, I'll find out about getting stuff, and then, um, yeah, that should, should be a problem. Great pickers required, must be hard working, motivated and committed to join our team for approximately four weeks' harvest. With the unemployment rate in Hastings higher than the national average, Steve's finding it difficult to get a job. Well, I'd rather go to see one of these agencies today. Get the arse in gear so I've got a job start for next Monday. Here yeah, I love. A recruitment agency may be the best chance Steve has to find a full-time job. I'll just come and see if there's uh, any chance of getting me a job like. So you're local? Yeah. Where do you live? <laughs> I'm, I don't actually live somewhere. I've been living in a tent at pet level on the beach with my son oh, in Lord. another tent. So, and the council don't want to house us. They don't care they, they, they say it's not a priority because, you know, because I'm an older person, I've got no dependents. But you've got a child? He's 22 years old. Oh. At this moment in time, we've got some positions for industrial cleaners. It's temporary work, but especially in your circumstances at the moment, if you go for a permit job, they're going to say, well, where you're living. And if you divulge too much, they're going to go, hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what you're saying. Flying discs. You know, flight. Finding work without a fixed home address isn't the only issue. Even living in a tent on a beach doesn't improve Steve's chances of getting a council flat on the Sussex Housing Lottery. There's thousands and thousands of people who are bidding on the house and then they wheedle it down to who's the most vulnerable five and then they each go and look at the property and then you've got a top band as in A for people with most wanting. Woman and child, she's going to get in the top five, you know. Someone mental health issues might get in the top five. Or, I don't know, a refugee might get in the top five. Someone that's got a higher state of vulnerabilities. I've been a local for 47 years and I'm class is not as important as a refugee because he's come to his country and he's had hardship and he, he needs a place straight away sort of thing. But I don't resent them. I'm not I'm angry at them, it's not their fault.
Hi, I was just listening to your advertisement on the local radio station. We don't own the house that we live in. I don't have a penny of savings. So I don't want to be a millionaire by any stretch of the imagination. I would just like to be comfortable and know at the end of the month we're not looking for money to put in the electricity meter or pay the council tax. It's a struggle. It really is a struggle. My rent's £415 a month. It takes me three weeks to earn my rent. I borrow money from my parents, my friends, my siblings. Um, my friend fills my freezer for me. Make sure that I have food. I don't know how I'm going to survive these next couple of months. It's really hard to say this all out loud. Over the last five years, Cambridge has seen the highest rise in rental prices in the UK. Renting a double room in a shared house can cost over £700 a month. Right, 17-year-old Tyrone grew up in a village not far from here. A year ago, he left home after his relationship with his mother broke down. The night I'd left my mum's house, I popped in to see one of my mates because I was, I was literally I was an emotional wreck. And I was like, I don't know what I'd do. I've just left my parents. And they went, where are you going? I went, I'm going to Cambridge. And I went, no, you're not. You can stay here for the night and we'll give you a lift up to Cambridge in the morning. Tyrone has got a job at McDonald's. But because he's under 18, he struggled to get housing benefits. So he's been moving from place to place, sleeping on friends' sofas, and trying to stay off the streets. I lived in a, a caravan trailer for maybe a week and a half. And from there, I lived in the bungalow of a disabled woman. And I was there about th uh, three days. When she'd asked me to leave, Tom said, come home with me. He said, come home with me, put a roof over your head. I'm, I'm always worrying where I am going to be sleeping. That's probably the thing that scares me the most. For the past three weeks, he's been living rent-free with his co-workers, Tom and Steve, while he looks for a room to rent. Hello, my name is Tyrone, and I'm just ringing about your advert on Gumtree. If you could give me a room... I can't afford a flat, so I'm, at the moment I'm looking at just a room. I went to a place yesterday, just a bedroom and a private bathroom. I thought, this is, this is amazing, I really like this. And he was basically like, I want a grand in deposit. So I'm thinking, how do I get that money quick enough? And then he wants 500 pounds straight away. So he wants 1500 up front. There's, there's people out there who can afford that. Me, on, on a paley rate of five pounds 35 an hour, working at McDonald's, it's not possible to even afford a place like that. If I was to move away from Cambridge, I'd lose my job, but I want to stay in Cambridge. And the only way I can do that is if McDonald's give me 10 pounds an hour. 10 pounds to me mean a lot. I wouldn't have to be worrying about where I am going to be sleeping. Tyrone is on a zero hours contract and earns five pounds 35 an hour over three pounds less than the UK living wage, which is calculated by an independent commission and is based on what they estimate people need to maintain a decent standard of living. Unlike the minimum wage, employers are not obliged to pay it. Well, come to me at work the other day. What was it you said to me in the... I was serving a customer. My voice went really squeaky. The customer laughed. I went, sorry about that. <laughs> Went over to Steve, asked for certain fries, and it did it again. Can I get two small fries, please, or something like that? <laughs> I, I think you said, can you go through, through puberty twice? And I, I, I actually tried to give him, like, some heartfelt, like, it's OK, it only happens once. <laughs> Everyone's voice breaks every now and again. Let's change the subject. <laughs> yeah, <good day. laughs> this week, I requested Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all got declined. I've asked for every available hour I can get, and I'm still getting nothing. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Like you're on a zero hour contract. Like even if you complain, even if you say, uh, "I want to work more hours," they have no obligation to do anything about it. That's why we have the campaign to scrap zero hour contracts. Tyro knows that his arrangement with Tom and Steve won't last forever. So he's determined to find a room of his own soon and not end up on the streets again. Just going to the bench that I stayed on when I spent two weeks on the streets and I didn't have anyone there for me. I was going into work smelling and the council refused to help me. This is the bench. I slept on this bench. It's ridiculous. I owe Tom and Steve everything. I, but the thing is, I've got nothing to give to them. I, I reckon if I lost Tom and Steve, it'd break me. Like, I haven't got anyone as close as them two. When you got it in your head, if I overthink it way too much, like on a night, I won't sleep at all. I spend a whole night up thinking about it. Like that one wish now, which I probably will, I will never get, which is to see my mum, just to give her a hug. Sofa surfing mainly affects young men. Falling out with parents is the main reason. So-called sofa surfers don't even register in the official statistics. Falling through the cracks of government records, the hidden homeless, those who sofa surf are the homes of friends and family. The number living in temporary accommodation has risen by about two-thirds since 2010. MPs called it a national crisis. Yesterday I was cooking. What did you cook? I see no one brought me any empanadas. <laughs> Where's my okay. empanadas? Angelica was born in Ecuador. In her late 20s, she moved to Spain to look for work with her ex-husband and two children. But after the 2008 economic crash, she lost her job. She's been working in London for the past seven years and is now part of the migrant population that makes up one third of the capital's workforce. Mira, esto me llegó también, no sé qué es. María Angélica Bolaños, exitosamente has ganado un año del curso de la ESO de Entry One T con este nivel. <laughs> Angelica rents a one-bedroom flat, but to make room for her 18-year-old son, Angel, she's had to convert her living room into a second bedroom. Nos sostenemos los dos. Él es ahora actualmente el que me da valor y yo también. He's studying full-time to become an accountant but also has to work to support himself and his mom. Me hubiese gustado que estudie nada más, pero es la situación económica que tiene que trabajar por la madrugada. La bendición. Chao, mami. As well as studying English all day, Angelica works night shifts in London's richest district, Kensington and Chelsea. She's a cleaner at a luxury car dealership where a sports car can cost £300,000. She entraba a las 6 de la tarde. Y lo que más sorprendente es que se ganan, venden coches tan caros y nosotros pues ganamos tan, un sueldo tan bajo. Angelica works with Freddie. The two cleaners are not employed by the car dealership but by an agency who pays them £7.50 an hour, nearly £3 less than the London living wage. Like the UK living wage, it's not legally binding, 
employers can either choose to pay it or not. Yo no, o sea, no éramos prohibidos tocar los coches. Que era inglesa, pues ellos iban cada día a sacarles billo a, las, a los coches. Por hora ganaban 20 libras. Mi compañero aquí del trabajo me dijo, vamos a un sindicato. Adiós. Hasta mañana. Y pues mira, ahora por habernos inscrito en el sindicato y por pedir el living way, el sueldo digno, que es 9.75, entonces nos han suspendido. Following a dispute about hours, Angelica and Freddie have been suspended without pay and have asked for help to fight for the London living wage from their union. Hello, good morning. Buenos días, Petros. Petros set up the union in 2014 to support vulnerable workers and pressure companies and job agencies to pay employees a fair wage. Qué, qué impactante, o sea, no me esperé, van y está suspendido tú y tú. Entonces, ¿qué se oh, siente mal? O sea, me, me puse bloqueada. O pronto o tarde, vamos a sacarle justicia, eso seguro, ¿ok? He venido aquí al sindicato y tú eres el único que nos has dado ánimos y estamos en pie de lucha y o sea, dueños del mundo, podríamos decir, porque son poderosos. A una clina, pues no. Para el sábado que vamos a ir a la, a la protesta. Angelica and Freddie strike, two cleaners against a multi-million pound company, will be one of the smallest strikes in British history. Algo de nosotros tendrán que decir porque la emigración es mano de obra. No estoy haciendo, sabe, estoy pidiendo el living way. On the south coast, Steve hasn't been able to find any work, and tonight's forecast storm is imminent. So they've spent what spare cash they have on supplies to protect their camp. With nowhere else to go, they have no choice but to prepare for the approaching gale force winds. This makes it fun. Because you've got something to laugh at, because it's good. We know what's going to happen, it's going to go. <laughs> That's the only downside. I fucked my pan up. Knackered. I'm not freaking out because I've lived by the sea a lot in my life. If it happens, we run. <laughs> what can you do? Not good, is it? Severe weather warning. So there was no yellow warning for tonight. No yellow warning for tomorrow, but there's yellow warning for Saturday, and it's already this bad today. A tent to barely withstanding this. Shame, isn't it? This is how close it came last night. It literally, what, a foot away from that? That's how, that's how close it's come um, to my tent. I knew it was quite close because I kept waking up and I kept getting a bit of water hit me on the face, but I thought it was raining. Obviously, it wasn't, it wasn't raining because my vents open, where the waves were quite high anyway, it was obviously splashing down and the spray of it was going hitting the tent, and obviously that's what kept hitting me in the face. <laughs> because Steve's been unemployed for a week, he's got no savings and he's down to his last 80 pounds. So he's applied for universal credit, but he's been told they can't pay anything for five weeks. I think the rollout of universal credit is the biggest disaster they've ever come up with. It's just fast, it's rubbish. Change over to universal credit is undoubtedly having a huge impact. Asian's Food Bank has seen an 82% increase in referrals. So we're seeing people at breaking point. People are desperate, angry, frustrated, afraid and worried. However, advanced payments are available for those who need extra help. Bullshit. This universal credit is, as it says there, chaos. Absolute chaos. It's a joke. They don't allow for circumstances like this. It's just wrong. It's wrong. It's totally wrong. It's a joke. A new welfare revolution is underway. Universal Credit merges a number of separate benefits into one. By design, all new claimants will face at least a month without payment. But it's not just people who can't work that are struggling. Even those in work are finding it hard to make ends meet. I can't find my Rizzlers. 
Weeks of sleeping on Tom and Steve's sofa is finally coming to an end for Tyrone. Enjoy your new room. Yeah. He's found a room to rent in a shared house for £80 a week. This will be like my ninth time moving in the last six months, and hopefully it'll be the last time. Go down the cash machine, get the rest of my money out, get ready for paying the rent, and then worry about what's left. I don't have many options of places to go. I need somewhere fixed and start, start an actual life, because the life I'm living at the moment, going from place to place, is not a life that any 17-year-old should have. Hi. This is Willow. <laughs> Just ignore her. This is going to get another carpet put on it. I am going to get the rind. My stepdad's going to sort it all out. The out. main thing oh, is I've got a roof over my head. You have a roof, what? you've got a wardrobe, you've got chest drawers. Is it possible to get a lock for the door? I'm having the door put back on. I'm just waiting for the man to put the door on properly because the last lock just knocked it off. But it's fine, I can put a lock on it. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 150, 160. At least we move 30 quid. Tyrone has finally got his own room, but if he wants to keep it, he'll need a full week of shifts. Buckets on McDonald's, uh, they're not actually buckets. But I'm thinking it's because we're not allowed to accept tips or people could steal money. I don't want to be accused of stealing money, so it's probably a good idea. Being on a zero-hours contract means he might only get four or five hours work a week, not nearly enough to even cover his rent. I want McDonald's to change. I want people to get a real living wage. Bye. Second, end of zero-hour contracts. Because with a zero-hour contract, they can cut the shifts so you can only get one shift a week. They control you with a zero-hour contract. A few months ago, Tyrone joined colleagues in a strike to push for an hourly rate of £10 for all staff. When we strike against McDonald's, it, it, was, it was the best thing I'd ever, ever done. Like, the feeling was amazing. So Tom and Steve organised the, the union before I joined. Um, so that's how I got involved. Just looking back at it, like, just mind-blowing. <laughs> like, I never expected me to ever do something like this. When workers protested in 2017, it was the first union strike against McDonald's in the UK. Hi, who's rolling me a fag? Their actions persuaded McDonald's to pay a minimum rate of £8 an hour for all workers over 25. But given the average age of employees on an hourly rate is only 20, they're still fighting for workers like Tyrone to get fair pay. I don't know many people who's fighting one of the biggest corporations in like, the UK. And I am. I just want to show everyone that don't matter how old or how young you are, you, um, if you fight for what you believe, then you're going to get it. Angelica and Freddie have been suspended without pay for the last week. You know where it is, huh? You know where South Kensington is? OK, we'll see you here. They're threatening to strike until their employment agency agrees to pay them the London living wage. Los pitos, los pitos, ahí están. Petros only put the call out to his union members three days ago, and over 50 people have turned up to protest alongside them. Están hechos cargos estos. Pero nadie se moja. Pero yo les dije que cuando lleguemos a una victoria va a ser para todos la cartera, ¿sabes? Basta de esclavitud que ahora estamos en, en otro tiempo. 
The courageous Freddie and Angelica, they're only two workers that are standing up to big people that can pay what they should be paid. demonstration today with three days notice and you can see how many people have turned up. I swear to God we're going to be coming back here day in, day out. We're going to be going inside. We're going to be going outside. Cada día de protesta de un trabajador es un día de fiesta. As well as studying full-time, Angelica's son, Angel, also has a job as a cleaner. He works a four-hour shift before college every morning and earns around £160 a week. Now his mother's suspended, they're relying on his income to survive. When you wake up, you want to keep sleeping. I have to, because I have to pay my transport, uh, pay my food. I need to help my mum, so I might as well to work. It's 8 a.m. and Angel's returning home from work to get ready for college. This morning, he's got some positive news about his mum's strike action. She's made the national headlines. Mira, that's famosa. Dicho. Uh, now, when we join a union and ask for a fair amount of money, enough to live on this expensive city, they want us out. It's very hard working and studying. When I lived in Spain, I did not feel poor. It was only when I came to London that I felt poor. Hello, I'm Rachel. Have you been to a food bank before? No. First no. time? First, first time. Yeah. So, this is a list of food. Yeah. So, milk. Yeah. Would you like milk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of this. <laughs> oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Tinned vegetables. Yeah. And um, pasta, rice, or couscous? Rice. Y estoy muy agradecida de la gente que está aquí. Que no me esperé que la verdad me vaya llevando cosas para comer para mi hijo. Ha habido gente que en realidad sí se preocupa de nosotros. Ahora mismo, como estoy suspendida del trabajo, estoy corta de dinero, pero me emociono mucho porque hay gente que sí, sí te ayuda. Y voy contenta porque llevo aquí comida para comer con mi hijo. Gracias. The record number of food parcels last year has been handed out according to the Dressel Trust. 1.2 million food parcels in this country. Those are people who are really, really suffering. If people vote Conservative again, is that going to carry on? And the answer seems to be yes. Come to get some help with some food. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Nice to meet you. I'm safe. We serve people at least three times in the crisis period, so we'd love to help you so you can get back on your feet. Yeah. Sweet corn, it's my favourite. <laughs> I feel embarrassed about using the food bank, but if you haven't got the money, what, what, I can't starve, can I? I can't let my boys starve, so it's a necessity I've got to do. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks so much. Yeah. Cheers. Ten years ago, around 25,000 people in the UK used food banks. Now, that number has risen to over 1.5 million. 
feel really bad taking this stuff. Someone else could have had this, couldn't they? Why? We need it just as much as they do, mate. No, but I've got money, I've like, just sold yeah, a couple of how, I could Bill, have got this stuff. Bill, for how long, mate? For how long? Don't just, just, you know, get with reality, mate. I ain't got a pot of piss in. This is fucking, people were nice enough to let us have it, mate, I'm telling you. Don't think I could have walked in there and got it myself, because I'm 22 and I'm young. I shouldn't have been using a food bank, should I, really? You know what I mean? I should, I should be sort of supplying it for myself, but... How are you going to do that? Well, I've got money in my pocket. Today, That's what I say. I'm on about in the long-term future, mate. Hello. I currently work, but things are pretty tight. And I'm, it's getting to desperation point because I'm keeping my family with a roof over their head. I would like there to either be more hours or more money, just so I don't have to panic. I'm 52. I'm a single mum. I have a teenage daughter. I work part time, and every month I panic about paying direct debit. I can't do things with my daughter because I can't afford to. So I think that has an impact on our relationship. Um, I also get benefits, which they make me feel like I'm a criminal for claiming them. Fundamentally, at the moment, it's really, really tough. You can have a cigarette? Yeah, have you got a cigarette? Uh, yes. It's been a struggle for Tyrone to pay his £80 a week rent. So he's moved back in with Tom and Steve. Right, we're done. Let's go. See you, Tom. Have a good day. But this time, they've given him his own room. Basically, I just put the camp bed. Um, it wasn't like... Couldn't go out properly, like completely. I can't, I can't sleep like that. I only ever taken one picture when I was 13 with my mum. Um, it was on my SD card, that was on my other phone that got stole. So I never get a picture of my mum. What's this behind you? Well, that's a certificate. So why did you get a birth certificate up on your bed? Mm, I don't know, I guess it's the only thing of my mum and my dad have got together, technically. It's my mother, my father. And I know I've never seen them ever together, but they're like, I've got my mum and my dad here, so if I have it over my head, it's like, it's like they're watching down on me. I mean, I got my wish now. I've got, I've got a room for myself, I've got a bed, and I've got a happy living space. But just as Tyrone gets settled, there's more change. Tom and Steve's successful strike action against McDonald's has attracted the attention of the Bakers' Union. Go on, mate. Yeah, right. They've been offered jobs in London, and Tyrone faces the prospect of being homeless again. Resigned from work today. Resigned? As in... Like, handed in our, our notice to Jamie. What happens with where I go? And... Obviously, you can't live here, because you'll, you'll have nowhere to go. And the, the problem we've got is we're not, like, your legal guardians or anything. So, like... We're moving to London, you come with us. Unless you don't want to come with us. Um, no, 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 I, I, I generally, I want to come with you guys. Like, you guys are, are my family and I want to come with you guys no matter what. It's going to be a bit hectic over the next few weeks, but once we're set up, it should be good. Whatever happens, me and Tom will look after you. We'll make sure you're fed and watered. <laughs> fed and watered? Yeah. We need to deep clean the flat as well, so we get as much as that deposit back as we can. And have a party. Yes, a party. that is the main yeah, thing. I think it's the end of an era. It would be desirable if you woke up. In a few days, Tyrone will be leaving Cambridge for good and moving to London. 
Our new house is uh, four bedrooms. One room is obviously going to be Ty's, but it's going to be, it's a really nice place. I think Ty's looking for work in like KFC or Burger King or something like that. It's just low, low paid jobs, so it's, it's whatever you can find really, isn't it? So. I'm excited to go to London. Like it's a, it's a choice I've made. Um, I, I want I want to be with Tom and Steve as well. Um, but in the later future, who knows where I could be? Could be doing anything. He's handed in his resignation at McDonald's and said goodbye to his friends, but he hasn't spoken to his mother in over three months. So he's planning one last trip home. The plan for today, hopefully, is I'm going to go down to my mum's, um, hopefully get in contact with her and start talking to her, but mainly to say goodbye and uh, I'm moving on. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much from what you've said about them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to. From what he's told me, I don't think it's going to go very well. They probably won't answer the door. I know when he's gone before, they haven't. Have you eaten? I'm right. I don't nothing much. Sure. Yeah, I don't nothing tough. It's late October. Billy's only working part time, and Steve's not had a single job offer from the recruitment agency. They'll need money from somewhere if they're going to get off the beach before winter. We've got to save up then. We've got to, we've got to save up about 14 on the quid then. Yeah. It's silly money. Silly yeah. money. What was it? A month? A month's deposit in hand, and then you have to have do you have to have a full month's rent as well. Well, you've got to get full time job though. Mm. A day here and a day there ain't going to be enough, mate. Because I can't do it on my own. I need to get full time work. Jobs that no one no one else wants to do. Beggars can't be choosers. I just have to do anything at the moment. Absolutely anything. Hello? Yep, definitely 100%. Six o'clock time or? I'll be there on the dock, mate. Bye. Cheers, mate. Start tomorrow night. So start tomorrow? Hopefully. I'll come and help you tomorrow. Just hopefully this time it goes all right and I get some money behind me. In 300 yards, turn left onto Chapel Park Road. Steve's finally been offered a job delivering food six nights a week for a local curry house. Right this way, listen to me. I'm listening, but you're, not, you're, you're going left, right, right, right. I'm telling you where to go, just listen to what I'm saying. That's about 10 miles behind us, that fucking thing. Turn left onto Tower Road and turn right onto Bohemia Road. Is that 12? Yeah, yeah, it might be this one. He's going to earn £160 a week, but won't get paid until Friday, so he's relying on tips to pay for petrol. Couple of quid tip. If I take more time, sit back, go at 30 mile an hour, I'll do six deliveries in the night and one person tips. I've done a I've got I've earned a pound tip for about six deliveries. Where if I can get 12 deliveries in the same time, I've got another set one in six chance of getting a tip. Because that increases my chance of getting money for fuel. In 300 yards, your destination will be on the left. The curry house is there. <laughs> it's 300 yards. What number? Oh no, it's not, oh, it's no, it's not, no. Bill, you're fucking stressing me, mate, I'm telling you now. Hang on. It's St Mary's Terrace. The, <laughs> the fucking curry house is the White Rock, isn't it? Yeah. It's taking us to the fucking curry house. You're stressing me out, mate. Fucking typing in the curry house is own address. 18 St Mary's Terrace. Every job I deliver to is a chance to get the tip. So far, I've got two pounds tonight to cover about ten quid's worth of petrol I fucking burn. All right, but chill out. You don't need to get so stressed here about every fucking thing. Just listen to thing. what I say to you, Bill. Just listen to what I say, mate. You get and stressed I won't have about a heart attack over it, will I? No, you have a heart attack over the simplest thing. You want me to do all the fucking footwork and get us off the what fucking beach? Fuck and then you tag along and fucking enjoy the rewards that I've had to fucking earn. I'll tell you what, when we get back shot. to the curry house, fucking drop me off. You're all right, I'll tell yeah, you what, get the will. fuck out in a minute and we'll come will. from there. Yeah, I will. I'll get, yeah, I will get out. I will get out because I don't appreciate fuck all that no, I do. I don't appreciate nothing because you don't have And you do everything. Yeah, I fucking do. Of course you fucking do.
mine and my dad's relationship is very complicated because he's very stubborn. He doesn't like people looking after him or stuff like that. And yeah, and he always knows best, which is yeah, which is annoying. But I'm the only one that stayed with him. So the only one that stayed with him. And um, yeah, I think if I'd have left as well, you'd have had nobody, like no one. In the past, my old man's had some bad stuff happen to him. Like uh, my mother, she she cheated on him, God knows how many times, and then he got custody of me and my two sisters. And then all this stuff just spiraled, which led to him suffering from depression and stuff like that. He tried to kill himself a couple of times. There was no way I was going to let my dad come down to the beach on his own. You know, he's 50 years old. So whether, regardless, he calls you all the names under the sun half the time or I'm doing his head in, he's just going to have to bump it, isn't he, really? Once he's got a roof over his head and he's, he's safe and he's warm, then I can start cracking on with what I want to do. I hate fishing. Hi, y somos preparados para para todo y seguiremos se, adelante como Angelica and Freddy have been off work for a month. La pregunta es, ¿para qué ahora? Sí, es de repente un problema. Acusarles y quejar de ustedes es por haber sindicalizado, por haber votado por la huelga. Y eso es la verdad. Es, la es verdad. que es la verdad por eso. Today, they finally been granted a meeting with their employment agency. Their dispute may require legal advice, so they've requested Petros attend. After more than five hours of negotiating, they failed to reach an agreement, and their agency terminated the meeting. Although they'll be paid while they're suspended, their agency is still refusing to grant their demand for the London living wage. Qué desilusión. Qué desilusión, ¿no? Y no pedir el living wage que necesitamos porque este Londres es muy caro. I'm just going to cut to the chase. Long story short, we got that suspension unpaid paid. They agreed to do that. The guy running the show got and turned around and said, "So that means obviously you won't you won't be striking then." And we said, well, well, no, the point of the disputes, the dispute which gave rise to the strike, i.e. Their, their claim for living wage hasn't been met. You haven't agreed to pay them a living wage, so the, so, so the ballot is, is live and legitimate and their right to strike is, is as strong as ever. It's as if they just presume that they've got some sort of security to fall back on, you know? Like, they can't fathom that they depend entirely 100% on their wages for their existence. You know, the idea that I don't have a bank full of savings or, or, or you know, family to, 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 to prop them up, I don't think, like, honestly, I don't, I don't think this guy actually got that at all. Señor Padre, damos gracias a ti, Señor, que hoy tenemos eh, un plato de comida para servirnos. Angel and Angelica have had to rely heavily on Angel's wages. And although Angelica will now receive back payment, the future is uncertain. ¿Tú de dónde vas a sacar los 900 para pagar el alquiler? Si, si, si no puedes ni pagar ahora, ¿de dónde vas a sacar ese dinero? Es que eso, eso, yo lo que ya no quiero es tú es que trabajes, man. Yo te puedo mandar dinero a España. Eso yo también quiero que me entiendas a mí. Bueno, ya tienes 50 años, ya. Yo 18, eh, ya no cuides de mí. Yo, yo sé que, que quieres seguir cuidándome. Y ya yo ya me voy a instalar bien aquí en Londres. Y yo nunca vi, nunca crecí con mi madre. Y yo nunca disfruté de mi madre. Y yo, pues, ya que 
Yo no pude ser nada en la vida por falta de dinero, porque éramos muy pobres. No teníamos ni para comer, pero sin embargo yo he venido acá, a este país, porque yo quiero que seas algo importante. Ya que yo no pude ser, mira en mí, por no haber sido preparada. Y aparte de eso, soy a desplotada. Now both of them are working, Billy and Steve are saving some money and finally have a way off the beach. Steve's been offered a caravan to rent if they can raise £650 for the deposit. It's going to be weird, isn't it, because we've been here for six months. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Just to sit, just to sit on my feet up and watch a bit of telly. Really can't wait. You're the one I worry about. Right. My job's full time and it's, it's that, that place has been there for like 30 years. You know what I mean? And Aston's established. Yeah. Your, your job's not guaranteed one day from the next. No, no, my job's not guaranteed every every week. But if it comes to it, then I'll just have to. You can't pay the rent, mate. I'm on the own. No, I'll be able to pay. I'll be able to pay the rent. There's a lot of things you have to do, Bill, but you don't do it. Right. Well, I better shoot off and dad. I'll see you later. Right, right. Oh, God. If Billy pays his half of rent, well, then I'll be able to survive. Uh, Bill's my big worry. He'll just go to work while it's working at the moment, and then when it runs out, he'll just say, Oh, well, it's all right, Dad, I'll go and sign on. Or it's all right, Dad, I'll go and do something else. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, yeah, I do worry about him. But he's a worry. It's been over a year since Tyrone left home. Nothing's changed. I keep losing my breath and I'm a bit shaky now. But... Today is his last chance to put the past behind him before he starts a new life in London. Mum, if you can hear me, please, can you open the door? I need to talk to you guys. If if you can hear me, I've I've come I've come to say goodbye. <sighs> right, I'm I'm gonna go now. I hope at some point in the future you'll be in contact with me. I love you. I've done everything in the last eight months to try and make my parents proud of me. It's just so hard. I just want to say I love them. <laughs> That's all I want to say. After weeks of hard work, Billy and Steve have finally saved up £650 for their deposit and can move into their caravan. This is the beginning of the end, this isn't it? <laughs> the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end, Mike. Shit. If it stayed warm, I'd stay here. <laughs> I'm well happy I'm getting off the beach, fucking over the moon, but I will miss it, yeah. 
I mean, that is lovely, isn't it? Not often you can walk out your front door and see a view like that, is there? Running out of time here, Bill. Well, I don't know what you're up to, mate. I don't know what I'm up to. Well, you don't seem to be lately doing a lot, do you? I've got work to go to, remember? Leave your tent up and store stuff that we can't take today. Right, take what you need tonight, shove the rest back inside. Right. We've got to try and make this look tidy, Bill. Right, I need that. I need that. I need that. I'll push these two together. Then I'll be like this. With, and I'll get a telly on, telly on the wall. I live in the dream. We're loving it. Oh, Bill, we've got all plates and bowls as well, mate. Yeah. We're like aliens. We're doing we're like aliens. We was like, we've never seen this before. What's this? Oh, that does that. It's uh, a stone. <laughs> Fucking hell. I've really caught, got the short straw here. Look what he's got. He's got chest of drawers there. He's got everything, look. He's got his own like, walk-in closet. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. Been here two minutes and you're slagging me off, mate. Look. Look. Works, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm well happy. I've just got to be pucker. I mean, brilliant, this is. So I'm going to work hard to pay the rent each month. Because I don't want to go back to the tent. I want to stay here. I'm happy. Yeah, we're happy. <laughs> it's been four weeks and Angelica and Freddie have still not returned to work. So they're taking their protest for a fair wage back to the streets. Right, we're just about to try and get the fire so we're going to strike for living wage and we want to speak to the guy that did that. No way! No way! They sell the most expensive cars in the world, so we're never going to give up this fight. After a few days, further protests and unwelcome publicity from the press, their employment agency agrees to meet at the union office to discuss their pay. The principle of living wage is make sure that all of your employees, all of your workers are out of poverty, right? That is what being committed to the principle of the living wage means. Verdad, pues mira, hemos sacado buenas conclusiones. Ya nos pagan el living wage. They didn't just win the living wage for themselves. What they also did was win the living wage for around what we can calculate to be around 50 workers. So yeah. 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 we have been giving to those who are just about managing, we've taken four million people out of paying income tax altogether. We've given a tax cut to over 30 million people. We see record numbers of people in employment in this country. The reality of a working people is lower wages and less job security, with in-work poverty now at record levels. 
my tent's finally give in to this weather. <laughs> that ain't good. It's on its last legs, bless it. I'll leave that there for a minute. My generation's definitely been given a rough deal from society yet. There's not much opportunities or anything like that out there. You've got too many people running the country that actually don't have a clue what's really going on. They just don't have a clue. Every politician that comes along always says the same lines over and over and over and over again, and nothing, nothing ever happens. They don't care about someone like me sleeping on the beach for seven months. They don't care. That's what's wrong. They no, nobody cares. And uh, yeah, sad, but that's the way it is. For fuck's sake, actually get with the programme, actually see what's going on and do something about stuff that really matters. You know, sorting the housing out and sorting... It's not just sorting everything out, because everything's a fucking mess. I think something needs to happen. There needs to be a drastic, drastic, drastic change. Things are definitely getting worse. All the businesses is closing down. This was Heister's Fort Liftux, and it's empty as desolate land. The only shop it's busy is the job centre. That's that. BBC making a new documentary series. If you're working and finds it a little bit difficult to stay afloat, they want to hear from you. New documentary series on the real story behind Working Britain. If you're in work and fighting to stay afloat... Last BBC year, local like radio you. stations up and down the country played Britain adverts asking people to phone in if they were struggling to make ends meet, despite having a job. You know, we've got nothing in the bank. We haven't even got a pension. Pretty we're doomed. Calls came in from all over the UK. Working absolutely stupid hours. Frequently, skin tone payday, month after month. Two paychecks away from disaster or being homeless. I can't afford to keep living like this. Many asked not to be identified. Please don't tell them who I am. But some wanted to share their stories. There's just a massive gap in there between living expenses and what you can actually earn. And nobody should have to be doing two and three jobs just to feed the kids. We followed nine families for a year as their financial futures hung in the balance. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. Hell no! Being broke is not the same as being broken. So what does just about managing really mean for millions of us from all walks of life and from all over Britain? I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. Poor man must be freezing. I've never seen anything like it. All these statues. Is that Wales over there? Don't talk about Wales. I just want to cry. I want to go home to be with my family and the grandkids. I've just got everything there. Errol is from Penegroes, a small village in North Wales. But when the council cut her local services, she was forced to leave her home behind and come to England to look for work. It's such a lovely little village. 
good community, friends and family around you. It was a lovely life I had there. The only problem was there's not a lot of work there. The buses, the council started not paying for some services. I couldn't work a Sunday morning. I was paying for taxis home late at night. And I'd worked all day and all weekends for about £17 if I was lucky. One day I decided, I picked up a bag and I decided to go and find work somewhere. I just had enough of it all. Errol moved to Liverpool, where she now rents a small one-bedroom flat and works up to 60 hours a week in the kitchen of a Japanese restaurant. It's a bit of a shock to the system because I've got so much space in my own home. I've got a 26-foot living room and I'm, I feel a bit um, claustrophobic, but it'll have to do for now. Um, this is the Dorothea Quarry, um, where I spent all my childhood it used to be stunning when I was a little girl and um, there used to be um, big, massive purple flowers everywhere. These are some of the grandkids. I feel so guilty not being around for them. Uh, I really do, but it was a matter of um, I had to because um, I wouldn't have been able to pay for my house. Um, there was not enough work for me. I always walk, walk to work. Could take me about 45 minutes. Errol earns £7.50 an hour at the restaurant, which is in line with the national living wage. But after she's paid the bills, it doesn't leave her with anything left over. We're taking the bus. No, I can't afford the luxury of having buses. It take, if I took buses every day, you're talking about wo working maybe for one hour to pay for a bus, and the tax man doesn't seem to realise um, things like this. That is a lot of money per week and a lot of money per month. I work in a Japanese restaurant. I've been there for a year now. The only problem is it's a zero-hour contract. I don't know from week to week how many hours I'm going to get. I went into work about 11 in the morning, and it's now after 12, I think, at night. You have to take the hours while you're offered them because they might not be there January. My sleep pattern is all over the place. You have a job, but you don't know when you'll work or if you'll be paid. That's the reality for a million Brits employed on zero hours contracts. <laughs> New figures from the Office of National Statistics suggest 910,000 people were on zero-hours contracts in 2016. A race to the bottom on pay, job security and workplace rights. How did we get to this stage and how should we tackle the problem? In Wales, Errol used to earn a little extra money by making Christmas wreaths to sell to her friends. And even though she's moved away, she's keen to try and keep the moneymaker going. Oh, I've just seen a lovely variegated holly tree. It's just a bit dangerous getting there. I don't know how I'm going to get there. She's looking for conifers, pine cones and holly, wherever she can find them. What a good find. I'll risk all just to get some of this holly. I have never, ever seen so much nice holly in all my life. Oh, my God, it's the cops. Oh, my God. Somebody must have reported me. I, I just have to come back when it's dark and nick them, then. Errol has set herself a target of making 70 wreaths, but she's taking a risk. She doesn't yet know whether her former friends and neighbours will still want to buy them from her. My mum always used to say when we were kids, do you think money grows on trees? I think money does grow on trees. The worst thing, I had to pretend to my mum that I was going to Liverpool to work for a weekend, but I knew that I was going forever. Um, it was a bit of a nightmare.
having to lie to somebody, but... And if she, she knew where I lived, she wouldn't sleep a wink. <laughs> Two jobs. So I'm in 20 grand debt. So I'm 30 years old, self employed. I've worked every single day, worked my ass off, worked for peanuts, work um, overtime, and I'm still living at home. All I'm doing is working, 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 working. Yeah, and that's life itself. I can't see myself getting out. I'm putting myself in the ground. North Ayrshire is one of the poorest places in the UK. High levels of unemployment and deprivation means that a man born here is likely to die seven years earlier than a man born in Kensington and Chelsea. For local funeral director, Kevin, many of the people he buries haven't even made it to retirement age. I want us to work to our 67, and the people we are burying is not even hitting 70. There's nobody in the box, strictly for the photo shoot. Things are definitely getting worse. All the businesses is closing down. This was Heister's Fort Lift Trucks, and it's empty, it's desolate land. The only shop that's busy is the job centre. That's it. And there's no many jobs there. Death has entered the whole of the county. Death of the companies. It's as if we've forgotten about. The funeral directors is kind of bucking the trend and the fact that everybody dies and everybody requires a funeral director. As we go into the office, you can see it's not a big building. And this is the preparation room. This is where coffin rack. You never know when you might need them. We go through that in a couple of weeks. This particular bag is a disaster bag, and you can scoop the remains into it if they were hot by a train, etc. So that's just ready to lift at a moment's notice. People's coming to me for a cheaper job to get done. The austerity is there, and it's really, it's real. You know, even people working full time's got no money. I feel sorry for them, personally. Right, come on, shower. You're playing. You're going to get in the shower first. Come on, you can play outside. Kevin works over 100 hours a week to make sure his partner Zoe and their three-year-old son Dax have enough to live on. My grandmother, etc. they had a job when they left the school. There was loads and loads of jobs. In my father's generation, the, the work started to dry up in the late 70s, early 80s. I came along in 1985, there was very little left. And when I left school, I became self-employed. And I've, I've grew a business from zero, most of the time single-handedly. We're working hard. Everything I'm doing today is for having the future. Although Kevin's cut-price funeral business is booming, the margins are very low and he doesn't make much money from them. So he's decided to diversify. He's opened a taxi company and a small cafe outside the funeral parlour. In the shop, we sell a range of hot and cold food, ice cream. We also do a delivery service to your house. This is my partner, Zoe. Always hard at work, always smiling. Take the breakfast off and that, please, and get us a crepe out. Yeah. Get the macaroni cheese in. Half past ten in the morning. Yeah. Strawberry Sundays and macaroni cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday is a day where everybody's hungover 
and they all order breakfast at the same time, which means we end up with us. It's a nightmare. As if he wasn't busy enough, Kevin also works as a mechanic, specialising in cut price MOTs. With four businesses running, his goal is to make enough money this year to start putting a little aside for his son's future. So every single thing that people require, MOT, death, food, I cover all the bases, i.e. working every day God sends. If Kevin can give me anything, that would be more of his time. And he can give me everything, he just hasn't got much time. To. And it's the most precious thing. Because you don't know when your time is going to end or, or somebody you love. I'm coming up for it, you know, and I just I think you start thinking about things. You work for a normal life, but then you've got to work like hell, and then you end up your life's doesn't that normal at all, because all you're doing is working. That's the way we are, we just we get on with it and that's it. All across the UK, people are working harder for longer and for less money. Five and a half million public sector workers have had their pay rises frozen or capped at 1% for seven years. I wanted to be a nurse because my daughter was critically ill when she was born and I was observing everything that was going on around me how they had to keep her alive. And I thought, you know, I can do this, actually. This is something I can do. Lorraine works as a senior intensive care nurse and earns around £28,000 a year. We're having services removed from us. You know, A&E departments are closing down. There's now one A&E department from four hospitals. Penny pinching all the time. What can we cut next? Oh, let's cut the NHS. Taking into account inflation and the rising cost of living, she's worse off now than she was in 2010. I'm on online banking check-in that I've not gone overdrawn because then the banks are charging you. I think it's something like three pounds. It's a lot of money. I can buy a chicken with three pounds, so why should I give it the bloody bank? As well as having a stressful job, Lorraine also looks after her mother, Jo, who was seriously ill earlier in the year. Listen, we still look gorgeous at 76. Seven. Oh, no, not yet. And I've seen her come home that exhausted, that tired. She could have fell asleep over the tea. And you've gone, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Recently, Lorraine has started taking on extra shifts at nights and weekends because her mm. partner, Keith, has seen his work as a pest controller dry up over the winter months. Keith loves corned beef, so a packet of corned beef was 99 pence. It's in the boot, love. It's £1.33 now. But my wages haven't gone up in eight years. It's just incredible. I'm about £77, I think it was. Got some offers, though, for a large chicken, £2.69. More chicken for... 20 pence per packet of it. Even the leeks, and they're usually over a pound. There's me other striper. <laughs> Striping is my life. <laughs> Striping is reduced prices, basically. To help her stay in control over what she spends, I know, I know. Lorraine pays for everything with cash. So if you've got your cash, missus. And once a month, she collects housekeeping from her two children and her partner, Keith. I split it so that I've got £100 a week for food. 
and then I save for Christmas presents. So there's oh. another hundred mm. to go in there. You've just took money off us and gone, yeah. that's, for, that's yeah, for Christmas presents. Yeah, it is as well, I yeah. know it. Oh. No, 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 How no, 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 so you I'll buy a third of your own No, 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 you don't understand. I could see why I pulled the book on, is it? Have you said it? <laughs> that housekeeping goes to everything, so I have to put money away for the dog, for the cats, for the bloody mortgage. I have to think about everything. All you have to think about is handing over your money every month. Yeah, I, I haven't had that privilege like you and your previous to just do what you wanted to do. You know, we're going to New York next week. We'll just go to New York. And now enough's enough. Don't like this conversation. No. Hi, um, I'm 45. Up until 2015, I was in a 20-year relationship, which ended, so I moved in with my parents. At 45, where I still am staying, it seems like a very far-off, distant dream to even rent somewhere. I'm a single mum. I'm 32. I have struggled constantly just to keep us afloat. I've worked full-time, I've worked part-time. There isn't a part of money, there isn't any savings. You know, everything is really tightly budgeted. I think life has just made really quite difficult for single parents. Okay. I'm coming, Mummy. Oh, Penny, come on, shoes on, did you do your pack lunch? Oh, Penny, come on, we need to go. I'm coming, right now. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You haven't got that much time. Daniel, walk with me. Don't pull me. You guys are doing very well. Let's go, let's go. Bye, Gracie. Bye, Gracie. Bye, Daniel. Bukala is a single mum. She migrated from Nigeria 20 years ago and has been working in the UK ever since on temporary work visas. Oh, my God. I was struggling at work. It's like you're still working, you know? To support herself and her 10-year-old daughter, Venus, she works for an agency who find her shifts as a health worker. I've been working in care sector for almost 14 years. And I'm currently working for Elderly Day Centre. She's just finished an eight-hour night shift. I choose when I work because of my daughter. So now I'll come from night shift Drop out of school by 8.45 and start my college by 9 a.m. She's only had a couple of hours sleep in the last two days. And now she's got a full day of college where she's trying to improve her qualifications by studying social policy. Bearing in mind the nature of these eating disorders and these types of magazine articles, what's the target uh, readership? No. Everybody's body is different. So people have fast metabolism or mm. high metabolism. So no matter what they eat anyway, they can't put it on. You can't copy that. You can't no, imitate you can't. that. What else have we got on here? College is a bit hard because when I finish college, I have to go straight to work. If I don't have to work, it will be easier. It will give me time to read and other stuff. But as it is, I'm struggling to keep up. But I have to keep up because I must pass and I have a deadline. The more educated or the better educated you are, the better you have a good job. Does that make sense? And I need to set a good example for my child. If I'm saying to her, you must have a better life, you must educate yourself, you must study, I must do the same thing. Otherwise, I'm just preaching and not practicing it, isn't it? I want a better life. Bukala earns around £350 a week, but the hours are unsociable, and it's not enough to pay for the childcare she needs. Why were you swearing? Tonight, she's working another night shift, so she's asked her friend Debbie to look after Venus. Hi, Mommy. How are you? Uh, I miss you. I miss you too. Get your butt out of there now and go for a brush your teeth. You 
She's a very hard working mother. The bad thing is that she's been like working every single day. But there's night shift, there's morning shift, and there's day shift. She normally just does day shift and night shift. I love those days. I love what I do, but my work don't pay me enough. Our father, who in heaven? I worry so much. I I don't sleep. But because I need to work to make a living, even when I'm shattered and tired, I will still get my black ass off bed and still go to work to make that money. Thank you, Lord. Oh, sweet old. I slept for four hours last night. I went to bed around 2, 2.30. Mm -hmm. I got up by 6, 6.30. There's a time Venus actually said to me, she was crying. She said, I don't want you to go to work. You don't spend any time with me. I'm not spending time with my daughter. The only bonding time we have is weekend. And even weekend, I'll go to work at night on Sunday. You sleeping? As well as paying her regular rent and bills, every three years, Buckler has to find around £2,000 to renew her temporary work visa. This time around, she's decided to apply for permanent residence. But while she's waiting to hear back from the Home Office, and her status is uncertain, her agency have warned her that they may not be able to give her any more shifts. When I called the Home Office this morning, and I explained the situation, I spoke to a lady called Claire. She said to me that they shouldn't stop me from working. That because the Home Office has not refused me anything, you know, so my employer should not stop me from working. That what my employer needs to do is to call the Home Office and give that reference. They will then tell them, yes, she can work, and whatever my employer needs, they will give it to them. I, I did not even think they're going to stop me from working because it's a normal routine that I do every three years. When something is going to be good, it will get tough, but it will get better. And I believe, and from there, I've upgraded myself to myself to say, you know, if I believe I've hit the bottom, after bottom, Nick, there's nowhere else to go. It can't get worse than that. Christmas is approaching, and Errol has been given more and more shifts at work. The extra money is welcome, but it doesn't leave her any time during the day to forage for the materials she needs to make the wreaths. The trees I was um, getting conifer off has disappeared, so I'm a bit behind. She's only got two weeks left to finish all 70 of her wreaths. What sort of numbers are we on at the moment? Well, I've done about 40, but I'm seriously running out of materials. I can't seem to find any berries anywhere. Oh, I found some berries. <laughs> It started off just um, to get a bit of extra money to buy the toys for the kids. And, and then it just became what I did every Christmas. I won't, won't get any, to any debts over Christmas because it'll all be paid for by, by the wreaths I sell. Sorry, is, he, is he your garden? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it is actually. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I just thought it was a park, you see. Yeah. Well, we can take whatever you want. So oh, he's the owner of the tree. <laughs> oh my god, so embarrassing. I'm so embarrassed. I thought it was a park. With a mortgage in Wales and rent to pay in Liverpool, Errol doesn't have much spare cash for socialising. I'm going to the station to meet a friend I haven't seen for about, it could be 35 years. And I've just found out on, on Facebook that uh, we live nearby. But tonight she's meeting an old friend. This is the first time in six months that she's been out for a drink. Hi, Hi, so, sitting team, love, they mend the wall. The tail of the thing. 
Mae'n achos pobl eichau yn dyrnod to ddau falch iawn ac al mynd adra. Cys dwi'n colli'r grancids da. Mae gyda fi um, grand baby a mae gyda fi grandchildren. Dwi'n colli adra. Dwi'n colli adra am 23 blwyddyn. Dwi'n gadael fi am funud. Mae'n dwi'n colli adra. A job was once seen as a guarantee against poverty, but an ever greater number of people in employment are going without some of the basic necessities. Families earning the national living wage are being left short by up to £6,000 a year. So the cuts, you would argue, will hit rural areas far worse because, because as you say, they're starting at a, a much lower point. Yes, that's right. The unemployment rate in Kevin's hometown in Scotland is a third higher than the national average. It means that Kevin's cut price funeral business mostly deals with families who are living below the breadline. Can you discuss Dad's funeral? Yeah. 15, 60 is my fee, which is on the paperwork. Your 950 is your cremation fee. Mm. You are on a zero hour contract, yeah. lonely child. It's pretty difficult, to say the least. I just don't think that I should just be like, well, I've not got the money and just give up. I feel like mm. I need to at least give him a good send-off. So, yeah. Um, how much money did your dad have in his bank, do you know? £200. Pounds. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> so the assets that he's left is his record collection, mm -hmm. his motorbike. I've got somebody in Kilmarnock that He's was like you could get probably about two grand okay. for it. That would really help you with this. I know, I know. <laughs> if they don't have the money, there's not much I can do. And the environmental health will just dispose of the body. Is it in the contract that the, the customer signs? That the funeral fee must be paid two days in advance of the funeral or else the funeral will not go ahead. So here's an example of an account that I've let a family pay up after the funeral. They paid the, the deposit at £950, no problem, and then they've paid me up £50 a week, £30, £25 a week, and the, the outstanding balance is uh, £260. But no much point chasing it. Very poor people. Kevin's determination to save money for his son means he's just taken on a fifth job. He's earning an extra £40 a night delivering for Mama's fish and chip shop. Hi, Paul. Hi. £16.40, please. It's no great wages, but it's better than sitting in the house. You won't get anything sitting in the house. Hi, Paul. £9.70, hey. please. There you go, mate. I'm tired, I. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Uh, I'm just looking forward to getting and get my dinner. I got up in the morning, have a shower, put clean clothes on, and go back to the grindstone. Come in, have a cup of tea, eat my dinner, fall asleep. Sometimes with a chip in my hand. The history of working people trying to get control of some of their own time. You know, people actually did manage to get a 40 hour week uh, and it's gone. We need to get a better work-life balance. In the countries that have got the shorter working week, we tend to have lower unemployment and better growth. I work over a hundred hours a week. I don't do it for the love of the money because there's no profit in it. I still need to pay my mortgage or my garage. It's a thousand pounds a month. I'm over 30 grand a year in car insurance for the taxis. Buildings, public liability, road risk, cover. So that's the reason I've got to work over a hundred hours a week. Six o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night, seven days a week. Just for to swim against the tide. And unless you're strong, 
you'll no make it and you'll chuck the towel in. In Cambridge, Buckler is still waiting to hear from the Home Office about her application for permanent residency in the UK. But it's taking so long that her agency have now told her that they can't give her any more shifts. So, technically, I can't work. I don't have any work, any source of income. As of now, I don't have any rights to be here, according to them. <laughs> Go to school, be with Venus, do whatever other jobs I could do to give me cash on it. Because I still have to pay my rent by next week. I still have to pay my council tax by next week. I feel so tired. She's having to look for work herself, and this means she hasn't got time to attend college anymore. So she's being forced to study at home. You now people think I'm indestructible. People think that when you hit me, you beat a brick wall and you bounce back. But sometimes I have days that it becomes too much. And sometimes when I'm down, you know, when I'm sitting in my house and I cry, and I would doubt myself and I would check myself, then when I finish, I'll say to myself, it is okay. Venus, please. Tell me what happened at school today that you were crying. Because I, what I don't get from all of this that you're telling me is why you were crying. What exactly happened that you were crying? They all forgot about me when we were walking back. It made me feel lonely because I didn't have any friends. I understand that you are unhappy and you feel left out, but if you don't give people a chance, why should they give you a chance? We, we have this conversation every time. You keep trying. Enough crying. OK? Hey, that doesn't look like smile. Are you smiling? I'm not sure if you're smiling or crying. Look at me. <laughs> Mommy, it is OK. What company should you enjoy most? My company? You should learn to play with who most? Myself. When I see her like that, it bothers me. But she needs to be tough. She needs to be strong. You have to be strong. She has to be strong. Life is not easy. It's tough. She wants to be like a mom, and I said to her, I don't want you to be like me. I would like you to be better than me. My mom's childhood, I'm pretty sure it would have been tough. Because mommy used to live in Africa, and it would have been very hard back then. You have to work and 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 work. Even when you're very young, I think. I want my mom to be happy. And that she won't have to work as hard anymore and she'll get paid very well. But if mommy doesn't go to work, who's going to pay for food? So you have to think about it some way. Sometimes you just have to go through it. Lorraine knows all about the stresses that money worries can bring after her previous relationship broke down. She struggled to pay her mortgage and her house was nearly repossessed. Now, once again, money problems are affecting her relationship with her partner, Keith. It turns out that for the last few months, he's been providing lunch money for his eldest child and you can't just go throw money away when you've not been working and he's still paying his maintenance, which is good. But he knows that the fridge and the freezer are full of reduced stuff. So if he thinks he can just hand over £20, it's going to cause friction between us and it has done. So I ended up flipping my lid, <laughs> as they'd say. I felt so betrayed, but now he's not here. He's gone to his mum's, so um, today's been a pretty shit day. Yesterday was a shit day. Hopefully it'll work out. He's been in touch. I can't live without you. I know, but you've got to. Well, you, you've, you've got, got to talk. Yeah. I've got to talk. But you've got 
to make decisions as a couple and not as a single person. And if you want to make decisions as a single person, live a single life. And now, yeah. you, you, you saw tea socks and nobody says nothing. Well, and I blame you both, and you know I do. He said um, he thought it was very final. He thought it was? Yeah. You've got to have a row to Don't. make sure that the magic's still there when you make up. I understand all of that. So he's moved everything out. No, I moved it out. Well, Never mind him. I it's bloody moved, moved it out. Recently, life has been particularly stressful for Lorraine. She was on duty in the intensive care unit at the Royal Infirmary the night of the Manchester bombings. This morning I woke up to a text message off him. I am aware the strain you've been under for the last year. And I was so proud of the way you handled that. It affected everybody. Police now believe the attack was carried out by one man. A number of children are among the dead. When it's children, it feels so different. It's really difficult. And I asked Keith and I asked my curls and they said that when they talk to me, sometimes my head's elsewhere. And they know that my mind's like a bit screwed up really, to be honest with you. But it's my job, it's what I do, it's what I've got to do. It's going to come tonight and hopefully we'll be able to sort something out. But if we're always going to have this conflict, is it better to say enough's enough now? Where have you dug that up from? I was in the wardrobe. Huh? Yeah. Hello, you're all right. Both got lessons so. to uh, learn. I've got to be more communi communicative. Communicative. And I've got to be what? Uh, more patient or stroke less um, volatile. Yeah. From now on, I'll be a lot more open about stuff like that. I won't make that mistake again. If you're faced with that scenario or a similar scenario again, what are you going to do? I'll speak to you, am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. Steady on. <laughs> it's a story repeated across England. Subsidy is cut, fares rise, passenger numbers fall, routes become uneconomic. Like many places, especially in the countryside, services have been scaled back to save money. Campaign for Better Transport says four in ten local authorities have cut bus funding this year. Bus users are often people on lower income whose wages are lower than they were ten years ago. I am absolutely shattered. I definitely shouldn't be doing 13 hours per day at 53. I've um, 
I haven't stopped working with these flowers for about three weeks. Doing 60 hours in work and then coming back home to do these all night and getting up early in the morning to do them. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. Thank God I've nearly done all these flowers now. A lot of reese, so how many do you think they're here? <laughs> I think about, I think they'll be about 75. The wreaths have finally finished and Errol has hired a man with a van to help transport them back home. My home in Wales is um, an ex-council house, three big bedrooms, yeah. a 26-foot long living room. It's just I, I don't really know what to do about selling it. I don't know if anybody would want to travel about 34 miles to a city. Trying to get to work, because they've cut the buses and all that yeah. kind of thing. Since 2010, local authorities in Wales have reduced or withdrawn a total of 259 bus services, leaving many thousands of people isolated. I'm so happy to be home, my beautiful village. It's really the community that I miss. People are so friendly here. Oh, <laughs> If anything happens to anybody, we all have collections and we all look after each other. And don't a coffee friend, yeah, I cost Maryat. Yeah, I'm just telling how on. I'm selling out. I just can't believe how loyal these people are. I just want to cry. It's, it's amazing that people haven't forgotten me. I am definitely coming back home next year and doing my wreath. While she's home in Wales, Errol wants to pay her respects to her family roots. Errol's great-grandfather and uncle used to mine for slate in these local quarries, part of a forgotten industry that once dominated the economy of North West Wales. The people have risked their lives to go to work around here. I used to love walking with my uncle Quill, who used to work in this quarry here. My mum, her granddad, he died on the rock face. When this quarry was closed down in the 1970s, many local people were left unemployed. The Welsh people have worked so hard to make Great Britain great, and in jobs that they were risking their lives for, um, coal, steel, slate. What are the young kids in Wales when they finish school going to get now? Nothing. No chance of a job or anything. No, no bus services to get them to places. They've got basically nothing. If they want a job, they'll have to move. I think we've been forgotten, really. Errol can't afford to miss more than a couple of days' work. But before she returns to Liverpool, she's arranged to see her family for a pre-Christmas celebration. My childhood was spent with my grandmother. My grand was my best buddy, and I've lost all that. I'm hoping my grandkids would recognise me after all these years. Oh, happy I'm so happy. I'm absolutely over the moon about it all. Yeah. This is your house, Harold? Yeah. And all my belongings. It's a bed sat, really, isn't it? But what can you do? I've got to go back to England. 
I'll have to be there for Christmas Day on my own. Wait, really, I could be here on this table with the whole of my family sitting around the table with me. Instead, I'm going to be on my own in Liverpool on Christmas Day. Shame. It's springtime in Scotland, and all Kevin's hard work is finally paying off. He's earning enough money to start saving a little for his son. But it's coming at a cost. The last time he and Zoe went on holiday was three years ago. Kevin, he's working most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and the rest he's sleeping. When I first met him, I used to, that other day it was, I used to sit in the car with him while he delivered for the Chinese. So that's how we got to know each other. I always wanted somebody that was a hard worker. I got what I asked for, so I can't really moan about it, can I? And I see him here. But this hasn't worked to Kevin. It's not worked. So there you go, that's it. <laughs> he told me that when he retires, he'll take me on holiday and that. Well, he'll never retire. Not in his blood. Kevin! Yeah. Yeah. To spend more time with his son, Dax, Kevin is taking Sunday morning off. You don't want to make the Hulk angry. This is, this is Kevin in all his glory. <laughs> Hot stuff, eh? <laughs> it allows Zoe to open the cafe early to prepare for the hungover breakfast orders. Uh, don't drink, don't smoke, don't gamble, don't, don't use drugs, holiday. don't go on holiday, don't have a day off. <laughs> no drinking alcohol, nothing. I like a wee biscuit. Only a thing. Really, in life, it's, it's quite nice. <laughs> so, what? Prepare the meal? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rare to spend a lot of time together. We get wee bits here and there, but you've just got to go along with it. I feel this is the right path. Some people might think it's the wrong path, but I'm trying to provide a future for my boy. The way that the country's going today, I will probably buy my boy's house. And if he can save £2,000 per year, by the time Dax is 20, you know, £40,000 saved up. You know, he, he can buy a, a small flat for that. I worry that it's always going to be like this, that it's never going to change. Because when's it going to end? We're going to look back and realise that there's whatever we wanted to achieve. We're still, we're still working for it. Maybe one day we'll go on a holiday or have a day out, I don't know. But not yet. It's a long road to get there, It is not a crime to have a few quid in the bank, right? No, no, Thank you. can't have the inequality that we have. No, everyone should work harder. Just work harder. Do you know what? You work harder, people give you more money. It's a fantastic equation. After a month without any work from her agency, Buckler has finally received a letter from the Home Office. 20 years, 20, 20 years, Nick, 20 years, I waited 20 years. <laughs> you may already have received a letter from the Home Office. 
It is proof of your right to stay, work, or study in the United Kingdom and may be used as a form of identification. <laughs> But you don't know how much relief I am that I don't have to go through this anymore. Oh my god. Don't see any fish. Hold it. Fish! Oh. Now she's a British resident, Bookala can work freely again. But she's desperate to make up for her lost earnings. So she's taking on as many extra shifts as she can. We need to talk about something important. Since I'm now allowed to walk, my first shift is going to be on Saturday in the morning. At the moment, I'm not going to be doing night shift. I'm just going to be doing late shift. And you know most late shifts start in the afternoon. Now, yeah, when do they finish then? They shift finish, late shift finish at 10.30. 10.30, I'm going to be lying in bed by then. One step at a time. If I don't have to and I don't work, how do we make money? OK, you got a point. But then I'll finish by 3.30, so I'll be back by 2.30. So if we have to do stuff, we can do it together. When I come back in the afternoon, at least we have the afternoon to ourselves. Okay. Are you paying me attention? Yes. You're not a baby anymore. You are growing up. So start acting like one. I'm putting it on my Snapchat. <laughs> no spiders at all. By the time Venus is 30, I want her to have an easy, peaceful, simple life. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. I want her to be able to enjoy life to the best. I don't want her to be at my age, almost 40, and be going through what I'm going through now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not crying me a river, because other people are going through us. But because other people are going through us, doesn't mean it is OK for my child that I slave over for her to now grow up and fall into the same category. Hell no. It needs to be better. And I'm telling her, and I will sing that song till she gets it into her head. Inflation has risen to its highest level in nearly six years. Wages aren't going up as fast as prices, so people... What we're announcing today, Mr Speaker, amounts to the biggest pay rise in almost 10 years for around one million public sector workers across Britain. After eight years of austerity, it looks like a million NHS workers could be about to get a 6% pay rise over the next three years. Oh, there she is. Mm. <laughs> glad to see you. Oh, God, you've no idea how glad I am to be coming home. Honestly, I'm not lying. I've never known a day like it in my life. We've had this guy who's been specialed for the last two weeks, and then because we've been so short-staffed today, I was doubled up with him who's trying to climb out of bed every single minute, but also with a man who's had two cardiac arrests within 48 hours. So the care's been compromised all day because we're so bloody short-staffed. I felt like telling, you know, Jeremy Hunt to stick his 6.5%. The 6.5% pay rise will come in over three years, but the rate of inflation for the retail price index is predicted to be over 9% during the same period. So there's no rise there if inflation's going up by 9.6%. Yeah. What's the point in that? Well, it's not even on par with inflation. To me, it's just a PR stunt. My mum keeps saying she's going to win the lottery. We should bloody hurry up. She ain't my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I know. time darling we're just trying to make the best of what we've got really stiff upper lip and all that you know something's gone tragically wrong something's amiss it's all getting worse we need to go back to basics My hours went down to 20, so I had no choice but to leave. It's the same everywhere. Nobody seems to worry if you 
can survive or not. Never ever heard of such nonsense in my life. A zero hour contract. Fucking own this again. Hopefully won't be here as long this time, you know? So pick yourself up, get forward and just carry on with life. Just make it better. I'm hoping them, that the kids be able to go and live their dream, do what they want. And I want them to have better than me, not... Uh, you don't want your kids repeating your life, do you? You want them to do, want to do better things, you know? Getting paid for something they really enjoy.